Hey everyone, Brian and Jeff with WorkshopAddict.com and we're going to walk you through this 1971 green Corvette small block four speed that we have in the background. We bought this car, pretty nice car. It was a standard 350 that had a hard time getting out of its own way like most of them did most in 71. In 71. <laughs> so we decided to make some power. And it's a good thing we did because once we pulled the motor out and tore the motor down, we found out it's been into before and wasn't really done right. And that was something that I think would surprise a lot of new car buyers when you're out there. You can have a mechanic look at it, you can go through it, but how do you really know your rod bearings were getting warped? How yeah. do you really know that you were leaking a little antifreeze in, but didn't not enough to really detect it? You could go through and do oil samples, but give me a break, you know? And and you know without find pulling the pan and plastic gauging the bearings and all this and not normal, something that every the normal guy person is going to do gonna when they're buying right. an older car. Maybe you should. So what we did here, pulled the motor out, ripped the transmission out at the same time, went through everything, tore the block down to nothing, sent that guy over to our machine shop, and we sat down with our Summit Racing Catalog and the Summit Tech guys. The Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and we ordered a ton of parts for this car, flat out. We kind of had our goal set somewhere around 450 horsepower, 500 foot pounds of torque, and we wanted to make this car fun to drive on the road. That's the whole point of it. It's but we wanted to maintain the functionality because 90% of everything on this car is run off vacuum. So we had to remain a vacuum motor. And due to the cost of painting the fiberglass these days, we also wanted to keep the stock hood. Yep. We did not want to change that because that all gets more and more expensive. Especially so our, trying to match the paint after this many years. Right. So this this guy is is done in a way that everything fits as stock. We have the stock block. I mean, we ordered aluminum heads. We went with a 383 with the Eagle kit. And we started out taking everything over to our machine shop, saying get everything ready, balancing up the crank, putting everything together. And we soon found out that it would be a lot more productive just to build the engine directly at the machine shop. These just aftermarket parts fitting in this car weren't always happy. Because uh, so many of the parts for the Corvette were Corvette specific. And a good example is the water pump. You wouldn't believe it, but one water pump specific to this car, which means the timing covers don't always fit. See, we had to machine that down. The pointer on the harmonic balancer wasn't right. Everything. There's just a lot of little tiny stuff that running back and forth didn't make it sense to us. So after we got this motor built, we put it on their dyno. And that was the fun part. Yeah. So we made 453 horsepower with 489 foot pounds of torque on our second run. We're fairly tuned up there. We're still drawing in some winter air. It was like four degrees that day. So in the spring, once we get it all put back together, 100%, we'll take it back, have them do their final tuning on it and... Rock out. This will be a fun car to drive. Yeah. So we brought the engine back, dropped it in this car, and we have started to just button up the small pieces, which takes a ton of time. Because they're, again, a lot of things need to be changed because we're not putting the stock motor back in. Nothing stock on this. Everything has been changed. Radiators different, electric fans, up and down power. We did a different steering system. We're trying to make this car drive, drive something that's fairly modern. So we'll give you a walk around through the inside of it, where we're at right now. We are by no means set and ready, but we did get a chance to run it. it yes. And we are running it a little bit, trying to get the fans working, trying to get some electrical gremlins out of the way, and just get things buttoned up. What we will do, take this car, put it on a chassis dyno when we're done, in the spring, right temperatures, get some good numbers for you guys, maybe take it to the track, although I'm a little hesitant with the power and torque we're making and not really great tires. And 50 years old. Yeah. So. We're going to work things out with this though. We'll give you guys a little bit more, maybe in the spring, give you a shop tour. We are going to move on to the Travis Mills Foundation Jeep that's coming up next. That is going to be a fun car that's going to be back here, completely taken apart for some time. So stick with us. We, we always go over tool reviews, but you guys don't get to see what's going on in the background here. It's just kind of looks like a hood's open or a hood's off. But we're going to give you a walk through what we really do. There's always something actually being done behind us. Yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so thanks for watching guys make sure you subscribe we got a lot of cool projects a lot of good tool reviews and a ton of giveaways going on also follow us on social media thanks for your time have a great day